One idea. There are going to be three topics in the discussion. The first one is if we will pursue this part of the solution, whether it's education or a positive business case, what do you actually need to make that happen? So what are the recommendations you would suggest? The second is, beyond those recommendations, actually what would be the next steps? So what sort of actions should be devised to make that happen? And the third one is, which organizations or individuals do we need present to make it actually happen? And the idea is to think out of the box there and make sure that other organizations get involved that usually do not get involved in discussions like the IGF. This will come to a report which will publish published late January for the whole world to share, and we will come back to that later. So at this point, I will ask you to, for the moderators to please raise their hand again, and you can move to the this part of the discussion you would like to go. So number one is Gerben. Business case. Creating a positive business case. Number two is Markerville, the deployment of the regulation. Three, internet standards, which is BART, and the, to be built into products. Four is make standards and their effect on internet security, better known, ARDA. And number five, online, also in the corner, Mark Zwankarek on education programs to make sure that the standards are being deployed in education as well. So please disperse. We come back over in 45 minutes and then it will be reported on each individual session. Thank you. Yeah, that goes. Michiel. Nee. Hi.
person. Sorry, I'm late. What, what do you like to do? This is how to make uh, a business positive business case for the deployment of standards. Mm -hmm. That one is education, so okay. education curricula. Mm -hmm. That one is a small one, perhaps it's best to join there because it's very small. How to make products safe by design, mm -hmm. by default. Of there's regulation. So okay. And that one is how to proliferate yeah. the standards in a better way. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll join them over there. Okay. Uh, and just share your ideas, whatever your idea is, just, yeah. just share. So this is already in breakout sessions then? But only three minutes. Okay. Just so. Then we gather at the table again. Yeah, at the table 45 table. minutes and then all the recommendations of different groups okay. have presented. Okay. Good. Okay.
Excuse me, it's three more minutes, so I'm ask you to come to conclusions in your group. Thank you. Is it okay if I'm off again? I need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely lively and and, and uh, super interesting. But unfortunately, I can't can't really do the wrap up uh, because. Okay. So and there's there's no there's no need for me to um, do whatever you've asked me for the minutes or whatever. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Pleasure. It was really good. Vanessa, Vanessa. Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with the plenary part of the session. And thank you for discussing this so candidly and openly.
fans of Venmo and NSD. Yeah, we use both. Very good. <laughs> If everybody can take their seats, please, so that we can continue within time. It went well, huh? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, we will start with the report from group number one, which was on the, to create a positive business case. And is Gerben or Maarten presenting? And please introduce yourself. And no more than five minutes, please. That's quite a challenge uh, for me. Um, basically, we started discussing something um, a little bit more basic. In the, the group we were discussing the business case, we found that quite a few countries around the world perhaps are not even in the basic position to start talking about a positive business case because they are um, not in full control of the internet in their own country. They are either too small or, or not well organized enough to be able to, um, to make things happen at the internet level because it's controlled by, in some instances, even foreign uh, commercial organizations. So that government feels a little bit perhaps uh, uneasy if you try to look at implementing standards because they simply do not know where to start. So how can they do it? And we discussed that a little bit more. And we found that if you um, look into how standards are implemented around the world, we might focus on learning from, for example, aerospace industry. Um, they have set a lot of rules and regulations and standards, but basically um, they make them available for everybody within their uh, business um, field. So if, if organizations or businesses want to enter the aerospace business, they can find all the standards online that are applicable. And that may not be easy, but it's shared. And many of the standards that we are talking about in the digital domain are standards where you have to pay in one way or the other for access to that standard. Um, and of course, we are promoting open standards that are for free as well. But sometimes you, you find then on your way that you have to use software licenses, stuff that still costs money. And then uh, easy and equal access is not always possible. So a statement from the group is um, all standards that are relevant to the internet, to the core of the internet, to keep it safe, to keep it open, to keep it free, should be uh, indeed safe in themselves, reliable and cheap, affordable for all that want to implement those standards. And what we have seen, as, as one of the examples shared uh, uh, from one of the participants, is that GDPR uh, in itself is a nice case where the European Union set a level of, let's say, privacy regulations that have to be implemented. But then we see businesses trying to uh, start and make money out of that instead of just implementing it in the way it should be. We also learned from an incentives program that SIDN has run to allow registers to um, pay less if they implement DNSSEC in their, in their domains and actually at a level 
where the cost benefit would allow them to do the implementation so that it would be cost neutral. And one basic uh, uh, takeaway was countries may see a diminishing role in the whole internet because there are so many big organizations, big companies playing an important role, but countries should collaborate to set the standards. And then there is a positive business case for those countries. Thank you. Beautifully within time. Th thank you very much, Gerben. Uh, the second group discussed uh, to deploy internet standards successfully, it has to be incorporated in law that is regulated actively. That was chaired by Mark Carvel and rapporteured by uh, Martin, but who's, I think you're ready to report, I think. Mark. Thank you, Wout. And um, we had a very rich discussion, actually. I was very impressed by uh, all the contributors from a diverse range of, of countries and, uh, and individual professional experience. We, first of all, we, home, uh, we discussed what is happening at the moment in the area of standards development and the, and the lack of engagement or lack of an effective interface between the standards developing organizations, the SDOs, and, and governments and regulators. Lack of outreach on behalf of the SDOs and then also the capacity of governments and regulators to engage in these processes, which do have financial implications and also resource implications in terms of experience. Uh, a technical capacity, if you like, to, do, uh, to, to uh, engage effectively in, in the standards development uh, space. So, and, and of course the standards bodies do not see themselves as regulatory uh, bodies. They, they are developing uh, pretty much in a bottom-up way and a lot of that is driven by a very libertarian approach. Industry delivers what uh, uh, businesses and consumers want but there is no uh, uh, mandate, if you like, for the SDOs in terms of public policy interest, which is where parliamentarians, and, and we heard uh, from contributors uh, who are involved in parliamentary processes, involved in committees dealing with uh, issues of security and, and, sa and safety, um, you know, saying that they, they are not uh, effectively engaged and uh, uh, there's no accountability amongst uh, the development uh, organizations of standards. Uh, so there's a, there's a disconnect, a growing uh, disconnect, and there will be resistance amongst quarters uh, of the industry to, uh, to you know, legal intervention in some way. But the thrust of the uh, project in terms of the, of the concept of regulation was, was supported by everybody in, in the team, in, in, in our group. So governments need to be involved. Uh, no one size uh, solution for all situations. There has to be some adjustment at the local level, regional and local level. We talked about that in, in, uh, uh, also in our discussion. Um, and uh, you know, domesticating standards to meet the, the local uh, situation in, in, in different countries. Um, so I think those are our basic points. There's a very rich discussion, as I say, we need to do a lot more. And uh, the project, I, I hope, will facilitate that for the future. So thank you, Vout. I hope that's helpful. I hope I've covered most of the key points we discussed. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Also very nicely within time. Um, group three was on the how to deploy standards successfully, and then they need to be built into products. And that was chaired by Bart. And I'll introduce you to Pablo, who has arrived. So. Thank you. So, we are, I already yeah, met, and yeah. Thijs, and I think that looking at it, that you, Bart, are going to report. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we had a rich discussion as well, uh, so a lot of ideas came by, and um, first of all, we, 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 um, uh, the group supported this goal, so that the goal, the goal of having these standards be implemented as defaults, uh, it seems really important to get a change to, 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 uh, or, or for, the, for the adoption of these standards to make them the default. And um, some of the ideas that came up is that it's, um, uh, we should make it more transparent whether these standards are supported by products and services or not. And uh, that could be 
um, well, with, with, with uh, tests like we have in the Netherlands with internet.nl, which, which is easy to use, but it could also be some kind of certification or a quality mark. Um, so it is visible and transparent for customers uh, whether these standards are supported or not. Um, so, and with that you make, you create peer pressure and you also make it, uh, uh, make these standards a selling point. They are too much under, under the hood right now, so it's not visible and therefore they are not a, a selling point for, 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 for vendors at the moment or at least not enough. Um, as a government, um, you should uh, came up the idea that it is important that governments lead by example. Uh, they have their purchasing power and they should aim for high um, quality themselves and, and require those standards whenever they purchase uh, software uh, systems or, or services, IT services. Um, um, yeah, the, so, so, so the, 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 the role of the government is, 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 is by setting the example um, and maybe also by um, uh, uh, having legislation in place. So a minimum baseline could work, although on the other hand uh, 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 things are moving quickly, so it's, it's, it's may probably also not easy to set a a baseline there for many years, but on the other hand, we have seen that uh, well that self-regulation has its limits. So uh, um, maybe some legislation should be there, uh, uh, should be in place to get things moving faster forward. Um, and last but not least, uh, the involvement of, of, of politicians and uh, policy makers within with, with these standards could be more. So that relates to the to the to the to the to the point of the former speaker. Uh, we really believe that it's important that these people are more connected with the standardization world. Uh, um, so um, uh, yeah, that, and well, um, uh, and also with this this IGF. So um, some of the the, the participants uh, counted the the the, the amount of. Parliament uh, uh, politicians that are here t today and the other days, and it's uh, well a fraction of, of, of the participants here. It's too less, and we at least should should aim for five percent. Was uh, was for next next IGF. Um, yeah, I think that was it for for now. Thank you, Bart. Our next group, number four, is to make standards and their effects on internet security better known. That was led by Arda and Roos, and Roos is presenting on the stand, so the floor is yours. Ah. Um, first, we, um, uh, the, the question was how we can um, uh, get the subject more uh, to the public, to the governments, to uh, uh, the enterprises, how can we uh, market the subject of, uh, of uh, modern internet standards. Uh, one of the things is um, that all of us here uh, should practice what they preach. Um, we should set a good example because if you could discuss it and, and you have not arranged it yourself very properly, um, um, well, the, the subject is off the table. Uh, the website of IGF is not uh, reachable by uh, modern uh, domains uh, because they don't have IPv6. Uh, implemented, which is uh, too bad and not a very good example. So we think uh, next year that should be better. Um, um, uh, one of the participants said, because the, the, we started with the topic of standards, it's not very uh, fun, it's maybe a little bit boring, but you should keep addressing it as, as something which can be fun and, and uh, should be uh, on top of your mind with good examples and best practices and also with the risks. Uh, you, you, can, um, uh, you can lower the risks as a... As a business if you implement the standards on the right way. So we should uh, uh, keep discussing and keep uh, uh, um, talking about best practices and, and, uh, and uh, uh, risks. Um, 
We also said uh, we should um, get the technical people at the ISPs um, uh, on the podium. They are the, the people who are, have to work very hard to implement uh, and give it a lot of energy. So maybe we, uh, uh, you could uh, organize something like they get a prize when everything is properly done. Uh, that we, we really should um, um, focus on um, we know it's, it's hard to implement, but if you have reached uh, the goal and you've done it properly, you can win a prize or something like that. Um, and we, uh, we used to say that naming and shaming is not the way uh, to address this, this um, subject, but we, uh, we think maybe we should start a little bit by maybe first we say um, uh, we name the, the um, uh, service providers who uh, have done it very good, but we uh, should also maybe uh, start addressing the, the um, internet service providers who haven't done it uh, at all or have, uh, haven't reached out to, uh, uh, to the subject because we think um, uh, now maybe that it's now the time to start uh, shaming a little bit. Uh, and then uh, education, uh, we think it should be uh, as a security tool uh, of tooling, we should um, uh, keep on addressing uh, uh, in education so students sh uh, should know that it's not uh, that's not a choice, that if you have your uh, security right in place, you should implement uh, and adopt standards, and uh, it should be default from the, at least for the new generation, that it's not a discussion about whether or not you implement the standards, it should be default. Thank you. Thank you, Roos. Well, uh, please feel free, if you like, to applaud these uh, excellent recommendations. Um, we have group number five, which did something special because they engage online as well, as I heard from the corner of the room. Um, it was about education and the education curricula. And so please share your, uh, your recommendations, Mark. All right, thank you. Um, while discussing education, we, we noticed first of all that our conversation uh, came back to number four quite often, making things uh, better known. But I think the Really, this came back to the idea that uh, education is uh, a way that we communicate values to society. You know, we have taught people that they should um, wash their hands and recycle things. And so uh, we can use our educational uh, organizations to transmit uh, the values that, um, in order to both create demand for products that are, are secure, but also to create demand that curriculum uh, properly uh, use standards and teach them to the developers that, that uh, create them. And this required, uh, this awareness element required, you know, things that you've heard in the other groups, uh, creation of um, high-level narratives and narratives that are tied to uh, specific values. So uh, how does security benefit civil rights? How does security um, benefit privacy or other things? Things that are important to people within the education system, younger people uh, or their, their teachers. And so at a high level, trying to figure out how to explain uh, why this is important and how they can play a role. Uh, it, it's a, you know, it should be straightforward for our educational organizations to do that. Uh, then we thought about, you know, how do you create the course material to make sure that um, the standards are being implemented correctly and not all universities have the ability to create this source material and there's always the risk of fragmentation. So the Internet Society at large can help create materials. Uh, the industry can as well. Um, Microsoft was used as an example. I don't mean to be self-serving, but uh, the, the role of Microsoft in teaching um, the University of Washington or Apple University or organizations like this who provide training materials either to universities or within their own facilities. Um, Valve, you know, the gaming company, created their own university, which is now a university for creating video games, and it's very noteworthy. And so that same concept could be used for any variety of standards. And then governments as well, uh, within the EU, they've been creating some modules that can be distributed online. Um, there used to be a role for education to drive central sort of coordination and centralization of technology, and that's that's sort of dissipated. It is more moved to the industry, and so if we can find ways to promote that within uh, the universities, uh, finally, 
we see that lawmakers have a role as well. So as you set the, the rules for teaching other curricula or setting the, the curriculum for, say, a driving school, uh, they would set the standards what must be taught. They would monitor it by legislation and perhaps create uh, certifications. And so these will all be ways to drive these standards into what is taught in the universities. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, we come to the end of our session. First, what I'd like to reflect upon is that I, I had been asked by the MAG to organize something like this, which is sort of fitting in with the IGF plus discussion that is going on at a higher level at the UN. But this few months that we, Martin and I, were able to work on this proves is that if you go look out for the right sort of information that can actually organize a session like this, just look at what we achieved in the past only 45 minutes that we had allotted to us by this conference. We have some excellent set of recommendations, some excellent ways forward to promote these recommendations, and I think that that is showing what the power of the IGF could be. It's not saying that it's going to happen, but at least we can report very positively on that to the, fir the first MAC meeting next year. And the second observation is how much you personally care about a safer internet and a safer environment about on a, a very technical topic, which in the end still is about people. Because the people need to decide to implement it, the people decide how they're going to use it to change curricula on universities, to create positive business cases, etc. And that, that is, I think, what this room has showed. And we are going to take this home with us, Martin, Martin and I, and we're going to write a report that will be finished at the 31st of January at the latest. It will be presented on in several places, not around the globe, unfortunately, but at least within Europe, and hopefully later beyond that. So, you will find the report on the IGF website, but it will also be proliferated, hopefully, through all sorts of organizations around the world. But first, let me thank the people who volunteered, actually, to moderate this session, prepare the discussion that you had. I had the easiest session ever at the IGF. <laughs> thanks to that, so also my personal thanks, but also to the rapporteurs. So, first, a big hand for them, because they actually made this possible. And, and the second to you to actually take the time during lunch actually to come up with these excellent ideas and hopefully we'll be able to translate them into actions for 2020 and beyond so that this topic actually is going to change a little in the future because we need to make the internet more safe and more secure. So thank you all very much for your time, for your ideas and hope to see you again next year at, in, somewhere in Poland. So thank you.
aller avec le signal le vendredi, ça. Cheers.